Did you watch the new, the, the latest, uh, cool things, man? Did you watch the latest, um, Terminator? Why? Because of all the shit I heard about it. About the... You have to critique it yourself. Well, the thing Sometimes is, Rotten Tomatoes is just fucking rotten. I don't listen to Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, fuck it. Sure. Uh, I think so. It's yeah, people see all the fucking time. They want to see this thing. Man, we'll go ahead and count down this podcast in 3, 2, 1. What is up, Miguel? What's up, what's up? Is this shit working? Turn my microphone up. I hope so. Test, test, one, two, three. Test in. Make sure the shit works. It's been a while. How's it's it going, dude? Good, good, man. It's been super, super <laughs> a long time since we've... Yeah. It's been like since last summer. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. So I apologize. I haven't been here, but uh, at least uh, Jason has been keeping up uh, the podcast here, inviting some pretty good guests. Yeah, but I don't think I've had like a podcast since August. Oh, okay. Well, I went, well, your other stuff. So obviously, you're not watching the other podcasts, huh? Yeah. I have. <laughs> your tutorials and all that, stu- all that stuff. All man. that shit. <laughs> all that shit. <laughs> all I want to say is 49ers win the Super Bowl. So, if, you're, if you hate the 49ers... Um, Raise your hand. Sorry. Just kidding. <laughs> your team should have done better. <laughs> I, hope the, I, know, I hope the Chiefs actually have a chance. You I mean, know, the Chiefs, been... they're, what, half a century? Yeah. <laughs> and, and they look good, too, so yeah. I'm a little worried about that. I'm gonna go ahead and drink. Cheers to that. I haven't had, uh, well, what am I talking about? I had alcohol last Sunday when I watched the game. I've been trying to cut back on the on the booze. So I hear they're gonna um, put um, Kaepernick back in. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> we got that Jimmy G dude. He's, he's Italian. You know, the whole time I'm watching the game, I'm thinking, Dude, does like does like Jimmy G's like family have ties to the mafia, and do they have like Aaron Rodgers' family tied up somewhere? Because that's how he was playing. He's throwing the ball like fuck, just thinking about his wife. Like, oh, no, I saw kids. I saw more rushing, running in that game than I have that. He yeah, threw what one pass, two passes? Well, maybe he, he threw a touchdown. He threw a couple of completions, and then he but not much. Or not as you can see, a regular quarterback. So. No, not not a quarterback like him. Yeah. Whatever. Anyways, well, I hope you guys. Now, yeah, right? I hope you guys enjoy the Super Bowl. I'm gonna be making a little shit of wings, and of course, Jason decides to throw you, a fucking Super Bowl. Are party. you coming over with the wings? What the fuck? I already started my own party. For what? Your team's <laughs> not in it. What are you gonna throw a party for yourself? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> fucking bullshit! I tell you that. Man, you don't tell me nothing, and then. I send you an invite, like, I'm already throwing a party. Like, wh- where in your mind did you remember telling me anything like this? <laughs> when? when? I don't know. Never. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Full of shit. Well, that's how long it's been since we've done one of these, so. That's very true. Yeah. That's very true. So, we Anyways. have a couple things to talk about today. Well, we were going to have another guest. That's why we have another mic. He had an emergency, so he wasn't able to join us today. Um, but you actually have some topics. I do. That you want to fire out. And uh, I was listening to what you were saying. I'm like, hmm. That is a bit of a controversial topic, and I understand why. Mm. I understand why most people don't like talking about shit like this, but it's legit, man, and, and it's something that, that needs to be talked about, and yeah, do you want to bring up your... Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's the, the way the world is right now, craziness, nothing but craziness, and... Um, everything's upside down. Everything's upside down. Um, unfortunately, you know, just, you know, not only in the mariachi world, but everywhere else, you know, you got... What do you have? You have, um, you know, there's a couple topics I want to talk about. One, you know, not necessarily you have to be a director to, you know, um, rip people off. And, you know, you hear you hear directors, you know, kind of just uh, booking a gig. You show up to the gig, you do the gig, nobody gets paid. Oh, so, yeah. What the fuck is up with that? That's been happening for a long time. That happened ever since I started playing... You know, outside no. of Chongos is that you would join a group, you would have a person who's supposed to be the director, or at least the person who's booking the gigs, the leader of the group. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. Whoever's booking the gig, that happens a lot. And so. you go play the gig, you do one hour, two hours, three hours, whatever, and then they hit you with, okay, cool, well, the clients wrote me a check, so um, mm-hmm. I'll pay you back on Monday, Tuesday. And this is back in the day before yeah. we had Venmo. Before we had Cash PayPal, App. Cash App, Apple Pay, all, all, that, all of that shit, like... How even a messenger now, how you can send money. You can send money on messenger, and it's like, today you can't really get away with that. It's like, if you hire people for a gig, 
you should know you're going to need that money to pay those people mm -hmm. regardless if your client cuts you a check and you shouldn't even be telling your client before the booking please make sure you have cash we can't accept checks i have to pay these people on the spot be a fucking professional and a director right mm -hmm. and we, we still run into that these days don't we yeah definitely. And, and like I, I won't i won't stand for it man i'll just be like well um there's venmo can you do venmo like, oh, i'll get you later I'll get you later it's like you gotta be a friend like i have friends and i'm like i'll play gigs with them and i'm like i don't give a shit because i'm not starving i'm yeah. like you, they'll pay me whenever they get around to it mm -hmm. i really don't give a fuck but for like a stranger no yeah. it's like if we don't have a relationship <laughs> and a rapport mm -hmm. i kind of expect to get paid immediately right yeah for the most part i always do well i think if like for me if i'm gonna book a gig and i'm gonna ask you to go play i'm gonna make sure that as your friend i'm gonna have your money up you know, yeah. there. You know, you do the job where you get you get paid for. I'll probably it, so. tell you that I'm not gonna go play the gig. Yeah, probably, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> probably go tell you to fuck yourself. I'm not gonna go play your stupid gig. <laughs> You're giving me your stupid gig so you can go play another gig. I don't want it. Yeah, yeah, I don't want it. Forget it. I'm not going it's to Mesa. Where's the gig? Avondale. Oh god damn! I live in Northern Glendale. No, I'm gonna make sure that uh, any gig that I ask you to play for is like out way out. I don't know, like in Buckeye. Mm. That's why I will always say, no, I can't. <laughs> and then you'll have to be like, oh, it's right down in Peoria on fucking 59th. I'm like, all right, all right, I'm good. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll cancel my shit. <laughs> so what do you so what yeah. do you want to say about directors that screw people over even today? Because it was prevalent back in the day. We all know people in Tucson that had done that shit to us. You could only get away with it for so long. Like, what's the tipping point when someone, like, you're not getting musicians? Someone beats the fuck out of you? Uh, when you're not getting <laughs> caliber musicians anymore. Interesting. And so when you're picking up hire scraps. hacky people or inexperienced people. Yeah. And let's just say inexperienced people. Pardon me. I know everybody's not, you know, I'm not even. We are starting this word. podcast in New Year off with hate. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's not that. It's hate. more It's more like, it's just more, you know, these are, you know, real topics, real things that happen everywhere. And, and people just need to be aware that. You know, if you hear about somebody, if a close friend, hey, you know, make sure you don't play with this guy because last time I played with him, I didn't get paid. You know, I gave him a second chance and showed up and he still didn't pay me or whatever. So, you know, they can only last for so long. You can only do it for so long. And unfortunately, you'll see great musicians in one group and you're like, man, it's not good. And then all of a sudden, you start seeing members change and change and change. And you're like, what the, hell, what the hell happened? What's going on? And then you hear about what really happened, you know, even in the big, even in the big league sometimes, you know? I'm sure it probably happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got, I can only imagine, like, if you're a group in Cali or in Texas and you got lines of people just wanting to come and cover those stage gigs and mm -hmm. concerts, then, yeah, you might be able to fuck somebody over yeah. who's maybe not as prestigious, mm -hmm. maybe doesn't have as many connections. Uh, I don't think you would do that to someone that might fuck you up, though. Yeah, and even in in, in what we also got to be aware of as as a mariachi group or even the director or whoever, even agents, agents that book you for you these have big talent, you know, yeah, yeah. That they, you know, like hey, um, you're gonna back up so and so, uh, the check the check bounce, you know, or whatever, you know, <laughs> it's just like yeah. you have an agent who pays you like a couple of G's and like the check doesn't go through, you're mm -hmm. like. That's why I don't... I'll give you half now and then half what you guys are done with your job. Mm, yeah. So, I would that's why you have to have everything in contract. But even then, if you have something in contract, that's, you know, sometimes, you know, it's just they overpaid the... Or, or the artist, you know, overcharged now. And so, uh-oh, now we're... We're on a budget. We're on a budget. And now we got to cut... First thing, what do they do? Cut the musicians. Cut the musicians. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So, we got to, you know, just... We all got to be aware of all that stuff, you know, for, you know... Um, with my youth group, you know, uh, Corazon del Valle, shout out to you guys. Um, shout out to the kids. Um, you know, obviously 2019 was, was very wild for us. I mean, we, you know, we got to open up for first concerts. We got to back up. You guys backed up some serious singers. Mm -hmm. And this year, 2020, you know, we have bigger opportunities. Um, a lot more of that. And, and uh, you know, we had an incident. Yeah, you know, the same thing, you know. Incident? Um, an incident where... What happened? Where, um, kind of like that, what I was just talking about. You didn't get check, paid? Check bounced. Oh, Jesus. We had to wait, you know, a long time. And I don't think we got everything fully. So we just know, okay, we're not going to mess with that agent no more. So one thing that, I, that comes to my mind about, and maybe this is bad etiquette, bad form. Maybe this is a little unprofessional on my own end. 
if I get someone like that, like say I have an agent contact me, say, hey, can you do X, Y, Z? And I agree, right? If I, if I feel like it's worth half a shot and I, and I bounce the check, right? You know, there is a lot of um, social media out there these days. I kind of feel like if someone did that to me, I would start putting their name every day on every social platform and well, just you could screw yourself. And that's what I'm thinking yeah, I would exactly. do. I would probably do that. I can imagine that that would blacklist me from getting any kind of work, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I'm taking it kind of personal now. Someone paid me and didn't, someone booked me and didn't pay me. So it's like, at what point do I show up at the dude's office? See, my mentality is always like that stupid scene in fucking, well, what was it, uh, Straight Outta Compton when Ice Cube shows up to the dude's office with a bat. He's like, I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid one way or the other. <laughs> I have a little bit of that bad temper <laughs> where it's like, that's going to happen. Or, yeah. or I just let it go completely. When they, when they disappear, they don't answer your calls, stuff like that, and you're like, I'm like, on, man. I'm like this close to showing up at people's offices and just being like, the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're supposed to pay you for a job, mm -hmm. right? Now, that can really ruin your career. Definitely. Can, can put a bad, no one wants to work with a guy who's going to get physical. Mm -hmm. But that does happen. Yeah. That can happen. You know, so the, how do you remedy a situation? Do you just take it in the butt? Or, you know, what can you do at that point as a business? Yeah, uh, as far as social media goes, that's number one destroyer. And, that, and uh, unfortunately, now nowadays, you know, it's like you're kind of like, you accuse somebody, you're guilty. Fuck you, that's it, you're screwed. Yeah, a little bit. You know? There's, yeah. no, there's no judge and jury on that, right? No. You know, another thing I've been seeing lately... Um, on on post on even on, the, on a lot of these mariachi forums that are on Facebook and stuff they'll I mean they'll put a picture of somebody the name on them and it'll be either a client mm -hmm. or another fellow musician but I've seen a lot of clients say hey I give this mariachi the deposit they never showed up to my gig Ooh. they never showed up to our wedding they never showed up, whatever and these are people that you know a wedding come on you're planning a whole year ahead how stressful that shit is. And last minute, and you know nobody, nobody shows up to your to your gig. You're calling to confirm nothing, and the, and they just disappear. Mm. Yeah, you gotta cut your losses sometimes. Mm -hmm. So as a musician, if you get screwed over, and you turn to social media, what could that do to you personally? Make you look bad? You know, you're gonna get blacklisted from getting gigs. Like, how far do it, you take something? It could, it could, it it all depends. You know, think about it. If if uh, you have a good friend. That ripped me off, but that's your trusted good friend, and I and I accuse that person of you know, hey dude, what's up with your friend, man? You know, that causes a ripple between me and you because you're like, why are you talking about him like that? That's he's not like that. Well, tell him this and that, and you know, you make it a big problem, and that can't happen. Yeah, um, I don't think I've had that kind of situation. No, I don't think so. Most people that I work with and deal with have always been pretty straightforward. There's one person that wasn't in my past, and that did not end well. And I think I've told you the stories mm -hmm. of what I did when I was a 19-year-old pissed-off kid. It was bad form, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I still have that reputation. I probably still do because, yeah, I was very, like, I'm going to fuck this person over right now. I'm mad. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I did. I probably cost that dude way more than he fucking owed me. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I was like, I'll show you to fuck with me, man. Uh -huh. I have some weird white DNA, hillbilly, Davenport blood. <laughs> That's like, all right, son, you want to fuck with me, I'm going to fuck with you. You know, yeah. there's a little bit of that in there. Yeah. But that's not cool. No. That's not cool at all, right? It's so it's like, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's like, remember uh, that movie, uh, Bronx Tale? Remember when yeah. he's going after the guy for 20 bucks? That's true. And what does he tell him? Do you remember what he tells him? <sighs> he's like, he's like, so you're going to go... You know, hound this guy every day for 20 bucks, or leave it alone, and he'll never ask you for money again, right? Right, exactly. That's very true. You just let it go. And just, and that's it. They'll probably never call you again for a gig, but hey, whatever. It's over. It's over. It's, it's over and done with. Yeah. That's, that's the only positive thing that comes out of it. Yeah, you worked and whatever, but, you know, I mean, if it's an hour gig, if it's a two-hour gig, you know, even I, then, you just know that whole weekend. that's it. What do I do a whole Saturday? That's a oh, whole Saturday. Yeah, no, then you, Two Saturdays. A month. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a point where it's like, it's not just that this is how you are. This is personal now. 
Like you are deliberately fucking with my livelihood. Yeah. So so yeah, there's lines. Yeah. There's the s- severity of offenses and general moods of the day. I'm like, hmm. Eh, whatever, you know. I can get over it. Or nah, let's see what we can do to this guy. Mm-hmm. And that, that's that's funny you bring up Bronx Tale because yeah, you see that's why so these movies we talk about movies a lot and story and why the fuck I don't watch the recent Star Wars and why I don't watch the new Terminator and all that stupid bullshit and social justice woke madre you know I don't watch it because yeah. back in the day you had movies that were stories so that Bronx Tale right he tells that kid that kid learns it what happens in the bar scene when those bikers start throwing some disrespect mm-hmm. they didn't take any money they didn't fuck with nobody but they're being disrespectful it's like oh yeah, this is personal now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what does he do? He goes locks the door. He's like, "Nah, he's not going nowhere. Nah, he's can't leave. Nah, he's can't leave." <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. There's that moment and that look on all their faces. And even like, then, oh, even, even them, they didn't rob them or they just beat the hell out of them. Yeah, they beat their ass, mm-hmm. threw them out, and said, "Don't come back here again." That's it, right? And Mr. Then, Baller bites. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's kind of my attitude. It's like, all right, you're gonna walk out of here limping, and I'm gonna fuck with your bike now. Yeah. But there's also the thing at the end of the movie. Where you have a bunch of hotheads throwing fireballs, mm-hmm. and what happens? One of them gets him in the car. Yeah. So that's a great movie of consequences. Yeah. Sometimes you can do something and get away with it, and it's justified. Yeah. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you cross the line. Just say no to violence. Say no to violence. It's not worth. It's, it's not, not worth. worth you know, I mean, a fifty, a sixty, eighty dollar gig or whatever, and you end up in in jail for yeah. assault and all that shit. So, me- mental, I can fuck with you mentally all I want. <coughs> That's what social media is for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can get the social media muscles and be on the other end. Yeah, be on the other end. It's like... Yeah. So, there's, that's one problem. That's one problem. The, people not paying. People not paying and... Has this happened to you recently? Uh, you no, 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 no. No, no they got... I've learned my lessons and I know who to, who to gig with and who not to gig with around with here. You. Um, you know, I don't need to say any names or groups. They already, if I hope they're listening to this, because they're Fuck sure, you. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But, you know, um, on a, on a more severe, kind of sensitive uh, topic, you know. So this is the part of the podcast where we have to issue a warning to the general viewing audience that the following content matter may be offensive and mildly, uh, what would you say, uh, no. taboo? A little bit of taboo. Yeah. Might offend way. some people. Might rub some people the wrong way. Might be this demonetized from YouTube. No, I and, doubt and, that. And I don't really care. It's more, it's more just being aware. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, you know, we have uh, amongst us, you know, uh, and when I say amongst us, you know, some in the mariachi world, I'm not going to say any names, anything like that, but, you know, we do have, you know, registered sex offenders. Yes. So kind of a broad category for this topic and this is why we wanted to have our guest too who's a former police officer and a mariachi Mm -hmm. right has some you know from that perspective you know some some real life you know opinions and some stuff yeah i wanted to ask him a couple questions how how that works you know you you become a you know if if you a felon a a felon or or a drug abuser yeah any 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 of that stuff crime right because there's some people that have priors that still occasionally find themselves in mm-hmm. conferences, that find themselves not being taken away from where there's kids. Yeah. Right? And that, that bothers me a little bit. It's like, okay, whatever you do do in your personal life, no one's here to judge anybody, but we have a judicial system, and that hands out judgment, and people have priors. Yeah. And you still see some people with those priors, and the one you're talking about, it's a particularly heinous offense now, you know, there's two things, me personally, that I will get a little more on the reactive side that won't be so good. Definitely. That's if some dude... More for you when you have kids. When you have kids. See, I don't have children yet. I can only mm-hmm. imagine how that must feel. For me, it's if someone's beating mm-hmm. on a woman, I might I might involve myself. Yeah. I might, I might hurt the dude. I might hurt the guy. Mm-hmm. And when someone's fucking with kids, right? Mm-hmm. Messing with kids, harassing children, in that case... Sexually physically, harassing, physically, 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 you know, physically, sexually, whatever, you know, when it like comes to kids, zero you know, tolerance there. No. Zero. And, and unfortunately, you know, we're surrounded by it, so we need to be aware of... There was an incident recently in Phoenix, wasn't there? Yes. So shit. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, it will come to light, it will come to light, um, 
And it sucks because, because unfortunately, I kind of knew him like as far as a mariachi compañero, you know. But played gigs, played gigs. I played gigs with this guy yeah. too. And it's just like, man, like, how do you, how do you explain that? <laughs> well, well, what do you do? You know, some people I've heard say it's kind of a sickness. It's a mental illness for somebody to be getting into it with youngsters. And it, it's happened a lot. I remember growing up, there were cases of that kind of shit happening. And not just in mariachi, but like dance, the dance world, mm -hmm. right? You have cases of where someone who's 19, 18 years old, right on the cusp, fucking around with a 17, 16 year old. You're like, ugh. Yeah. Like, bro, you can go to jail for that. Yeah. Like, don't you know? Like, wait till she turns 18, man. Mm -hmm. Like, what's two years? You can't wait two years? What's the thing that this new generation is saying? Catch a case? Catch a case? Catch a yeah, case. you're going to catch a case. <laughs> and it happens. But, yeah. It's bad. So, so as a director, you, you're you responsible for high schoolers, for kids that are under 18, while you're doing gigs. You have the parents' trust. You have parents' trust. You have your own, your own uh, students' trust. You know your family. Your family. You. I mean, it's it's a whole wide thing. All eyes are on you. Mm -hmm. All eyes are on you, especially and if you're a director. Listen, so, it, so how do you feel about this? You know, as a it turns my stomach. Audition. Honestly, it turns my stomach. It upsets me. I, I, you know, I wish you know our guest speaker would have been here because I would have liked to ask. Hey, you know, if you're a uh, whether you're registered with, you know, a registered sex offender with the actual act or the intent, because they they have them classified different right. different different ways. Like if you're stalking, like how do you how do you like? I mean, are you still supposed? You know, do you have a probation officer on you? Do you have to, re you know, no matter where you move, I know you have to register yourself on that stuff. But still, it's like where does the line come where you you shouldn't if you're a a, a child sex you know registered sex offender right where's the line like who tells you dude you're going to these mariachi conferences and you're surrounded by kids you're not supposed to be there really. you're not supposed to be there yeah so where's the line what do you do is it even something that people talk about no i know it's, it's is not it, is it something where when you see someone at a conference and <clears throat> you know you have like the hey what the fuck what the fuck is that person doing here yeah and then just do, do do the people that run conferences, which they have their hands pretty well full, to be fair. These board, the board members. They have a lot to deal with from finance to everything down to what color the fucking flowers are going to be, right? Mm -hmm. So they've got a lot to deal with. But it's like, are they aware that there are certain musicians out there that have demons that have been judged by the state and federal government mm -hmm. and have a record, have priors? Yeah. You know? And, and, and of course, we know it's, it's everywhere. It's in every a job, whatever. It's true. This I, is a mariachi podcast, so I, we're talking specifically about the mariachi the culture. culture. You, you do know. have folks that are like students, 17, 16, 15, mm -hmm. all the way to like 19, 20, 21. Even young students that are in college, they're still very impressionable, green mm -hmm. sometimes, naive. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of youngsters get really, and as we sit here and drink beer... Uh, involved into like the drug and alcohol aspect of being a musician. It's not a mariachi thing. Mm -hmm. It's a musician thing. It's always been a musician thing, all the way back to Elvis, to Dizzy Gillespie, to Ray Charles, you know, to Johnny Cash. They were all drug addicts. They were all addicted to that life, mm -hmm. right? And you could argue that, yeah, if you're on the road, you know, 12 months a year, playing 10 shows a week, you know, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? You got to get up. You got to get on stage. Oh, you know, you're sick? Well, hey, man, you know, you got back pain from being on bass all the time. Your arms Do a couple lines. lines. Do a couple lines. That's right. This will help you, right? It's, it'll be a tool to help you get through your performance. <clears throat> and that's how you get people to get addicted, to get to that party life. Easily. Easily. Like, like that, like that, right? And you're done. It's gone. So I can understand that a little more. I can be a little more understanding of a person who's a recovering addict as opposed to someone who's done that, right? Yeah, that there's just no no excuse for that at all. Like it's not right, obviously. One, you know, you're a you're a grown ass man, even women. 
Yeah, how many? What about in the school systems? That's happening. You a lot. hear the freaking. You hear about women teachers and and their students. Yeah. And you know, and and then and then, and then the thing is, is that this is where I where I kind of get really upset because then the tables turn like there's when, a double standard. Yes, because then you hear you see all the comments where there's a guy. Oh man, I wish my teacher looked like that when I was in school. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've, I've had friends that no kidding in the past. Mm-hmm. Banged a couple of teachers back in high school because they were what? When you think about a high school teacher, if she's single, she's what, 23, 24? Well, now they're, they're coming in. Now they're younger and younger and younger. And you're what, 18? That's a high school senior apart. Yeah. And, you know, I can see how if you're an eight, 17 or 18 year old student and you hook up with a 23 year old, that's not, that's not crazy. No. Yeah. But it's unethical and it's immoral. And it's like, if you're a teacher, no matter what the law says, you're not supposed to hook up with your students. And college professors do it. I've seen college professors that, thank God they had tenure for them because they knocked up their TA. Because their TA is, what, 25, 26? Mm -hmm. And she's surrounded by this PhD professor who's making $100,000 a year, is smart, you know, charming, can take care of himself. That was fucked up is that he already had a family and kids usually by the time he gets to her. Yeah. And shit happens. It's not ethical. Mm-hmm. It's not right. You know, there's a reason why they have conflict of interest laws in certain professions because you're not supposed to get that in the mix, right? No. So what would you like to see happen as a person who's in charge of a youth group, a director, has kids, has you have a lot of dogs in this race. You know, me, I look at that and I just find that disgusting. I'm mm-hmm. like, don't, don't be touching no kids and let me see you do it, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But what would you like to actually see positive change, if anything, for these kind of folks? Man. A lot of them flee. A lot of them come back. You know, time, time people forget. Yeah. Oh, man, you know, he's, he's back. But, you know, hey, it was... It was five years ago. I, I, believe, years ago. I, I, I do strongly believe, you know, everyone can change. Yeah. You know, so it's not like I'm just going to, you know, curse you the rest of your life. But if you're, you're, if, you know, I look at it and the way I've seen it, even, you know, if you're, if anybody's out there unsure of somebody and you might have heard something, all you got to do is really type in their name, Google. under Google, picture felony will show up what it is so like for me the people that i know you know they have they have a you know a pretty bad one so it's like <laughs> you ain't gonna change like, you dude. look up the history of what their felony yeah, charge or you, their felony you're, yeah. and you're like damn yeah. um yeah and you're like no you this no there was no excuse for that so i know you ain't gonna change you're just a disgusting ass person yeah you know a, a, a man or a woman doesn't doesn't matter you know um so yeah, what I would like, to, I think, what I would like to see is people, you know, stop, kind of, you know, turning the other cheek. Right. Stop. Stop. Be, be more aware. Yeah. Because I, I can tell you, the my generation, the mariachis that played with me, you know, that are my age, we all have kids now. Yeah. We all have kids. Yeah. And especially, how many of of of, of our mariachi friends have their kids in mariachi as well? All of them. All of them. They're all, so they're all surrounded. Mariachi. They're all surrounded, and it's and it's sad because it's like, huh? The people like are people. People are either are aware, not aware, or they don't care. They're complicit. Maybe somebody's compañero was there. <clears throat> Maybe it's political. There's some political stuff too. It's like, oh, well, if I want to be able to play games with this person, I gotta shut the fuck up. Yeah. Not bring this shit up. Mm-hmm. As like, Just so I can either make the the you know the. The pain, you know, make the teacher roster. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know it, but you know, I think just we need, um, like for myself, like you know, we need to be really aware of of our surroundings. Don't even put ourselves in that kind of situation. So that's a good point. So, being a person who has ethics and morals, not getting yourself into a scenario where you could be even accused of doing something like that, yeah. like. That's been a big thing for me, personally. Mm. It's like, I'm married, and I don't go out, like, for no reason at all. Yeah. I don't go to a bar and have a drink for no reason at all. No, I'm not particularly good-looking, so I don't think I would fare well anyways. 
<laughs> I don't think I'm gonna just pick up on the spot, right? Maybe if I get a little skinnier, shit will be easier. Like back in the day, yeah. when I was really skinny, it was really easy to pick up. Yeah. You know? But right now, it's kind of difficult. But even then, I don't put myself in a situation where I'm constantly going to happy hours. Mm-hmm. And if I go, I ask my wife, like, hey, do you want to go with me? Yeah. Well, let's go hang out. And that's, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. I'm not putting myself in them situations where some 22-year-old's coming around like, hey, I've seen you around. And mm-hmm. you start talking. And, oh, yeah, oh, you want some help with this? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, well, but, you know, let me think about it. And next thing you know, what's happening? It's, it's your fucking life is over. Yeah. Right? It's not worth it. No. You know, so that's one. And I think what I heard you say second is for people who are oblivious to situations like this and people who are complicit, to talk about it. Mm -hmm. To not just shove it under the rug. You see someone at a conference and you say, hey, you know, I don't want to make a big deal about this. This is the dude's history. Just keep an eye on him, right? Just keep, as long as he's here, Mm -hmm. keep an eye. That could be one way. Maybe having people that run security at these events say, you know what? You know you're not supposed to be here. Yeah. You know, just that little bit of uncomfortable shame and confrontation from an authority person who's in charge of an event. Mm-hmm. Well, because honestly, not for nothing, people who do stuff like that tend to be a little cowardice. They tend to be a little like, oh, they don't want they don't want confrontation. Yeah. Right? You know, that could be one way to fix it. I don't know. That's, that's a tough subject. Yeah. I think we just alienated Everybody, no one's listening to us talk right now. Everyone's like, turn that shit off. Yeah. I don't want to hear la 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 la. I don't want to hear that shit. Yeah. But there's going to be a parent or something out there. Like, even my own mom, she thought back in the day that mariachi was like the most positive thing in the world. She had no idea. She's just like, oh, mariachi is our culture and it's our history and it's music and it's a great thing for my son to do. To not get in gangs and not get into violence. She knew what she had in her hands. Mm-hmm. I was a fucking troublemaker as a kid. And it's like, well, I'm either going to go do that or I'm going to be playing gigs every weekend. Like, which one do you think she wanted? Yeah. She wanted me at the restaurant every weekend, not hanging out with a bunch of Pueblo kids going down 36th Avenue where people got shotguns in their fucking trunk, hanging out. Because that's what I was doing. Yeah. And so I stopped doing that so much. And it's like, hey, I got this great future here, man. I mean, I'm with the Changos. I play gigs. I don't have to work. I don't have to make burgers. I'm definitely not going to get involved with what you guys are fucking doing, right? And they didn't want me either. The, the, if I had even, if I had even said to my friends, hey, I want to do this, I want to do that, they'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? You, you're on TV, man. You're playing mariachi. You're a pueblo. You're doing all this shit. You want to come do this with us? Mm-hmm. They would have kicked my ass. They, they, they would have totally just like set me straight because of that. But the most alcohol and stuff that I ever got involved with was with mariachi people. We would go play gigs and then we would go with the older guys and we would go to parties and we would get completely fucking shit faced. Mm-hmm. And it was almost every weekend we did that. And my mom had no clue. And then she found out, and she was just, she was, she was, you see my mom. Was, yeah. So you can see how, you can see how pissed off that she was. old school comes out, and you're dead. Oh, man. <laughs> man. I'm just sitting there, and I'm like this on the couch, and I'm still taller than her. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom. I didn't mean to do it. And that, that almost fucked up my whole junior, senior year when we got busted. Yeah. It was really bad. And it wasn't even really with Chandos. It was just with other mariachis. Other dudes that are playing at restaurants that mm-hmm. we looked up to. You you motherfuckers all graduated. Mm-hmm. So we're all just hanging out like, man, I want to be like this guy. I want to <laughs> be like that guy. I kind of want to sing like Miguel. I don't want to look like him, though. <laughs> you know, but I like to sing like him. You know, he's pretty cool. <laughs> and so when I was in my early 20s and this, then the kids started doing the same... I always made sure to try, at least try, to set somewhat of an example. I'd be like, what are you, 18, 19? All right, what are you, in? still in high school? No. I would never hang out or drink with kids that were still in high school. I, like, I made that a point. It's like, if I had my drink, fine, this is mine, mm-hmm. right? I'm not giving you alcohol. And I think I've said that to a couple of kids back in the day, and they're like, hey, can I have, I'm like, what are you, 17? Yeah. I'm not giving you alcohol. Go, go. Yeah, I've been in, in you know, those kind of situations already, and it's like... Mm-hmm. You know, 19, 20, you know, out of high school, you're in college, 
all right, let's see what you got, right? <laughs> you're, gonna, you're not going to survive, all right? Yeah. You're not going to survive me, man. But that's tough, dude. Yeah. That's really tough. It, it, it is. I'm, 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 you know, obviously I have, you know, my, my youth group and, and it's not really a matter of, of, of uh, you know, trust from the parents. I mean, I'm glad that, you know, we hold our practices. The parents are there. Even when I have, when I hold my private lessons, you know, now I, you know, I just moved in my new home, new house and I have my, my music room. There's no door, no, no curtain, no nothing on, on, on you know, and, and the entrance of my music room. The parents sit out in the living room. I give my, my, my lesson mm -hmm. and that's it. I mean, you have to play it safe because again, you yeah. don't want to be put in that situation where you're like, you uh, that's it. Yeah. Because all it takes now is like, Hey, you know, he did this. And you're scorned. Oh, like, That's it. You're done. Thing. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're scarred for life. You know. Yeah, I I remember. <clears throat> yeah, I remember teaching at a conference one year, and then like all of a sudden, girls would be like, "Hey, can we take a picture of you?" And I'm just like, I took one picture, and then I thought, I'm not taking any more pictures yeah. with anybody. This is creepy as fuck. Because then I thought about it, and I was like, "That's not another, like, college juvenile mariachi." Yeah. That's some chick that's like in a high school group. And I realized that, and I thought, oh, shit. I was like, yeah. no more of that. Yeah. That's over. Because an image, anybody could just put something out on you, and that's it. Your image is ruined. Yeah. There, so. there, there really ain't shit you can do about it. Oh, you're just going to sit there and like, all right, yeah. I guess my life is over. Be aware. <laughs> just be aware, everybody. You know, if, you, if you're not sure about something, and something doesn't feel right, um, if you've heard something, look them up. That's all it takes. Google. Google. And that's it. It pops right up. You can like, I, I, I once did like register felons in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. Google, whatever. And like, I was like, holy shit, <laughs> there's so many people with convictions, man. I was like, God damn, yeah. armed robbery, armed robbery, armed robbery. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Okay, I'm not moving into that neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's sad, but you know, I think it was a topic, yes, sensitive, yes. We should revisit this. Especially with our, our friend, you know, when he's able to come back and, and do this. And I can only imagine that some people are going to find this very intolerable. They don't want to hear it. I think some people, when they listen to this and say, you know what, that's a great point. It's good advice. Mm -hmm. You know, they're talking about it. They're, they're just being real. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it has to be said. It has to be said. It has to be said because we Especially can't just we can't be stupid. What happened in the last, what was it, the last month or so? And this yeah. there's an incident in Phoenix, and it's like, okay, well... And it, 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 unfortunately, it has affected a lot, a lot of students. It's not just, you know, just, you know, one or two, but even the ones that weren't directly in that fire, you know, it's still, it's, it's a ripple effect, because now it's like, how are you supposed to, how are the parents, or how are the kids supposed to trust the next person? Person. Yeah. And not only that, it gives Mariachi a bad image. It really does. Yeah, that really does. That's sad, man. So, well, hope they catch that motherfucker. Yeah, no, that's all. That's all we can <laughs> say about send that. Send him to the booty but, house, man. That's what they're gonna do. But uh, let's talk about some positive shit. Some positive stuff. You know? This is the first podcast of 2020. Yeah. We went right down in the dark. We went right down. I, and you know, this is part of the first podcast. You know, I haven't. I have. I don't have gripes because everything. I. You know, I'm thinking. Going currently, I'm, I am currently playing. You know, with, with Mario and Angel and with Maria Chichapala. Love you guys. <laughs> and and you know, and I could say, man, you know, we have really made a big turnaround. Um, nice. You know, we About we goddamn time. Yeah, you know, we now have, and I'm and I'm not saying it has to be like that in every group, but. Yes. But yeah, it does, I guess. You know, if you want to sound good, you gotta put in you know, the work. You gotta put in the work. You know, read music. And now you know when we when we get together for our practices, we have our music sheets with us. Oh wow! We play as as it's written. Um, I my go to because yes, I I understand everybody has their arrangements and you know, and I see all these you know transcribed by this or if it's not transcribed, it's so and so mariachi's group arrangement. But my go-to always first, I always go Pepe Martinez. Pepe Martinez. All the time. All the time. Just, you know, my belief, you know, what I've been telling, you know, our, our, our group, like, for instance, we just took out Bolas. Yeah, they told me about okay. that. Okay. So, so, Mario was telling me they were taking it out, and I was like, oh, that's cute. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I did that in seventh grade. That's cute. But, <laughs> but to, well, I mean, but even then, yeah. I mean, you're, at seventh at seventh grade, if you did, you kind of you're playing the you're, you're just like, playing. You're just playing. Yeah, you're not. Now you're, you're putting in the passion, the emotion, you know, and that's and 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 so like I said, okay, if we're gonna learn this, we need to learn Vargas. Yeah. Before we start. You know, adding stuff like Kobe or Campeos. or or Camperos. They you know, that you know, they have a dope solo that goes yeah. along with the accompaniment. But it's, why why shoot up? That's the thing. Why shoot straight to that when you really don't know the foundation of that song? The basic cadence, yeah, basic you stylings. Know? Once you things. understand it, then I think yeah, then you can make it a little mas floreada, you know, and just mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it goes like that with 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 every song. I think if you're gonna learn. Something difficult, please learn it the you know the standard, the standard basic basic way. Go to Vargas first. Yes, always go to Vargas. If you're yeah, gonna yeah. go, if you're gonna go what to if you're gonna go to to uh, Paso Dobles Vargas. If you're gonna go to Polcas Mariachi Mexico Pepe Villa, right? You oh know, yeah. We you know we you know if you're gonna go listen to all those old school stuff. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, another thing, you know, just you know. Uh, um, It's it's been going smooth with 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 the youth group. You know, this is a new start. Um, I think having more exposure. Mm -hmm. You know, learning from your mistakes from 2019, either as a group or either as the way you're directing things. Um, emotion. Emotion. Yeah. You know, because uh, it kind of it, it 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 becomes difficult when you don't have that strict student teacher relationship and it becomes more of a little bit friendship. more friendship expanded yeah i think that's what you know that's what happens a lot of the time it and doesn't happen i can I'm, see how i mean yeah. that happens to me all the time but that's because i'm just a friendly person but what happens it kind of i don't want to say it backfires it hasn't backfired on me but you know I'm not a temperamental person mm -hmm. so to say yeah i have my short temper but it not when it comes to mariachi I'm more passionate, yes. So I make I may come off like I'm pissed only because I have a mindset. Okay, this is uh, this is the way I want to sound. Why aren't I? Aren't, why aren't we sounding like this? Yeah. One, you ain't practicing. Yes. Two, you're you you're you know you gotta put that that emotion in your in the articles, you know, or when you're in your in your money clothes and the freaking you know the style of of trumpet, you know, which I have no idea about, but. You know, well, just a couple of times that I backed up for you and, and ran a rehearsal, you know, I'm not going there picking them apart by note. Mm -hmm. okay? You guys practice the notes. If I hear something that is out of tune, I'm going to key into it. We're going to do it again. Yeah. I was like, okay, that run was, you played something flat there. Mm -hmm. What's, what key are we in? Yeah. And I'll make it up. Okay. Naturalize uh, it or whatever. Right? Yeah. yeah. But then some of the things I was talking to your students about is, okay, you guys want to use all of your bow. You want to get in there. This is a West Echo, yep. right? Or this is something lenta. You want to use your volume without mm. using any real, you know, just, there's a style to it, right? Mm. And then it can go guitar to well, bass, bass, you want to do this, you want to go here. Trumpets, I was like, oh, you guys pretty much know what the fuck you're doing. And there's to move on. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like trumpets. Do you, hear, do you hear that trumpets? Sounds, so, sounds like trumpets to me, guys. I was like, all right, yeah. just stop, stop cracking and take a full breath. Yeah, try it again. All right. I'm right. really, I'm really pushing. You know, I have two female trumpet players in the yeah. youth group, and good um, singers, good players, great singers, good players. You know, um, I am really pushing them completely to their past their max this year. That's good. Um, 2019, um, I saw where they kind of just went up and then flatlined, like leveled here, stayed yeah. here, teetered up. Yes. So. Now, 2020, I'm going to be a lot more harsher on them, and I told them from the beginning, and I have pretty good uh, ideas um, of songs that I want them to play, I'm not going to say, because, you know... Be stealing. Be stealing, but but they are going to be... kid groups will come steal your ideas. Assholes. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> I didn't say that, Tucson. I miss you guys. No, I, I'm going to Tucson this weekend, man. <laughs> And uh, yeah, no, so I'm really gonna push my group really hard. That's good. Um, you know, I do have. There was an incident here that I'm currently going through right now. 
And uh, if you're listening to all out, you know, this is something that it's I think... It's a legal issue, is it? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, so, you know, what do you do? I would like to know if anybody else that, that either runs a group or just, just a friend in general. That, you know, for in, in my case, you know, they're young. They're still learning. They're, at, you know, I have tried to, tried to build a strong foundation so far. And if that means... Learning four Pedro Infante songs, two Jorge Negrete songs, four Javier Solis songs, and like let's say five uh, Jose Alfredo and three Vicente, right? Sounds like a decent Something set. like that, right? Okay. Sounds, sounds like an hour of music to me. The problem is, is that this youth generation wants to go straight to learning, you know, Violin Mopango 15. Oh, God damn. Yeah. You know, and it's like... And so what happens? They get bored or they think, oh yeah. But then even when I give them easier stuff, they still have trouble playing it. So how how do I how should I approach that? You know, I've already lost my lid, you know, on that, you know, and 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 it's not only that, you know, I have one of my members who got offered another spot in, in another group, mm. another local youth group. Nice. And well, not really a youth group anymore because now they're over eighteen. They're all old. But, but you know, they play at competitions. They play a little bit more difficult um, music, and I'm not saying that that person isn't capable of. But it's like, I think, you know, and I've said this before, if you have no strong foundation and you start just building straight up from the, you know. Side to side of house, what happens? You're gonna crumble. That's gonna crumble because yeah. you have nothing underneath you to hold, to support you. Just be lucky. There's never a storm. Be lucky. You're never challenged. You're never tested. Because that's what's exactly what's gonna happen. You're gonna fold. You're gonna fold. And I'm in that situation, and it's like you know anybody listening out there, if you guys can comment, like how do I approach that? What's the what's the best way to approach? You know. Um, Trying not really to convince somebody because you don't want to force somebody that that is that doesn't have their heart in it anymore and they just want to go somewhere else. But how do I avoid avoid that from that ha- happening again? So so if I understand what you're what you're asking is, are you asking as a director how do you try to mitigate people a getting bored with learning solid classical rep mm-hmm. right for mariachi? B jumping straight to learning really complicated music before they're capable of doing mm-hmm. it well and then C saying fuck this I'm out I'm going to join another group and then they go off and then they they get fed everything and they're going to get bored too right and they're going to they're going to suck after a while it's happened in groups in Tucson mm-hmm. happened in your group happened in my group mm-hmm. where there was an all-star student had lots of potential had limited foundation and instead of them saying, hey, I want to be real, they just took everything they were fed, and they did that for years. Mm-hmm. And then what? Are they... What? You don't hear them. You don't hear from them anymore. What's going on? Like, sometimes you do. Sometimes people are, like, teaching. Yeah, or, they, they or they're, the, they're registered sex offender list. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we're on so, that. Sorry. So the question is... How do you how do you better serve your students? I think yeah. so that they get the foundation, learn the rep, and and that you don't lose people because the last thing you want to have to do as a director is replace somebody, mm-hmm. short notice, right? I don't know. I kind of think of it personally as like if you were running any kind of industry corporation, mm-hmm. you know where I work. You know, I, I, we just had this meeting the other day. My boss is saying, "Hey, I don't expect you to work for me forever." It's like, I want to help you grow. I want to help you be the best you are. But while you're here, while you're here, mm-hmm. these are the expectations I have for you. If you don't meet these expectations, obviously what begins to happen is a cycle of, you know, remedial, okay, you're starting to perform poorly. Yep. You're starting to get worse. Mm-hmm. Now I have to replace you because you're not cutting it. And listening. what happens? It affects your business. It does, because now you you have to hire someone to cover that person. You have to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Or you have to now teach a whole new person and take another six months to get them back up to speed. Yeah. You know, that's that's a good question. It's, you know, how do you avoid that that going in? It's, it's, a, it's in everything. Oh, that's every, yeah. Any business, if you, have, yeah. if you have an employee, you want to <coughs> keep them, 
engaged without overwhelming them. You want to help them grow so that they could maybe even one day take your position as a manager if you retire or if you go off to another gig, right? Yeah. And you don't, and you're going to have to deal with the fact that they might get as good enough to leave. You know, me personally, you know, I'm a senior analyst. I'm starting to look into becoming a program manager. Am I going to be a senior analyst forever? Probably not. Mm -hmm. I could if I wanted to, but probably not. Does, do you think that that bothers my manager at all? No, because while I'm here, I'm doing A plus work, mm -hmm. and I'm stretching myself, and I'm learning this thing. And eventually, I'm going to be. You could have students that start to take over as your, you know, second directors. You know, your understudy. They run. Which the I have. Yeah. You know? Which I have my section leaders, and now, I have my students doing kind of a mentorship that's for right, younger perfect. younger students, just so that they get the idea. You know, um, like I told them, I said, I'm allowing. <coughs> excuse me. Stupid cough that I can't get rid of. I'm allowing you to teach your you know younger peers mm -hmm. um so now you can't be hypocrites of your own stuff yeah now. you can't fuck you can't you around. can't you you can't be telling them oh you need to practice you need to you know you need to learn your you know learn your skills if you don't know them yourself and, and if you're not practicing and you yourself. gotta give your senior instructors juries mm -hmm. that's an idea that's one thing that you do. You think of, yeah, you know what? That's that is. I hate saying that word. Yeah, no, that's but that's sucks. that's true. Yeah, <laughs> you fucked it up for everybody. Sorry, yeah, guys. No. You guys know me. You know yeah. me and how I approach things and how yeah. I teach. That's one way to do it. Is, and you know, I mean, if you take it, is your senior instructors, you should give them juries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on some sort of a routine schedule, so that they have time to prepare. Uh, you should give them demonstration pieces to, on the spot, here's mm -hmm. this. I don't mean to put you if, you, if you mess it up, it's no problem. Maybe the first couple of times you give them a heads up, like, hey, you know, in two weeks, the, here's the piece, you're going to be jury in front of your younger peers. Mm -hmm. Have it ready. They get it good? Okay. I'm going to start doing this from time to time. Sometimes, most of the time, 99% of the time, I will let you know in advance. There's going to be one time out of 10 where I don't let you know, so that I know that you really are the leader here. Yeah. That puts it on them, right? Damn, sorry guys. But I just fucked you guys up. members, I know you guys just heard this, so good luck. Good, it'll make it better. Yeah. They do that in college. Mm -hmm. When you're in the music school, they don't even give you notice. They give you an array of pieces, and guess what? You learn all of them. Mm -hmm. You learn every single one. Hey, buddy. Where? Uh, so, kind of just um, elaborating on that. You know, when we when we were talking about you know standard pieces, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the groups have lost have lost the the I guess the the whole point of why you're getting hired. One, you get hired from a client and you're learning songs, crowd pleasers. To entertain them. To entertain them. And I think when you're, when, if you're going to go, you know, if you're going to go to a gig and you're going to play Violin Wapango, Veracruz Tres, Chardas, Rondinelas, um, I don't know, all these, all these concert style songs in the backyard. Nobody's gonna know them. No, you get, unless you, you get hired teams. from a bunch of hardcore mariachis, or or at least somebody that's 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 you know is just nothing but a Vargas and like you know average average. I've seen it once in Phoenix where we I played a background gig for mm -hmm. a bunch of uh, folks that were from um, Cali. No, 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 no. They were they were from Jalisco. Oh yeah. They okay. were like they were like from La Barca. That's where it was. Oh, they were okay. from La Barca, and all they wanted to hear were sones. And they requested every fucking song in the book. And the group that I was playing with, they could barely skate through them. Wow. And I'm sitting there on bass, and I'm just like, holy shit, you guys don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. really... Like, this Like this family asked for El Becerro, like, four times. Wow. And they, they could... They, there was one violin player that knew it. The trumpet player kind of knew it. The, the rhythm player the, the rhythm player. I'm like, where the rhythm player go? Yeah. All, all I hear in the background is this. <laughs> That's all I hear in the background right next to me is just a bunch of scratches. And I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. 
It was bad. No, no, I'm telling you. I think, I think we, we as as mariachis, uh, you know, as groups, as entertainers, we cannot, we cannot lose that essence of of, you know, you're getting hurt for, you know, by a customer. And they want to hear common songs. It's always good to have common songs. Yeah, you're not going to know everything. Yeah. But then again, where's the limit? Where you don't some where you're not playing pendejadas either. Right. You're not playing. You know, 15, el, mono de, el mono de alambre. Yeah. You know what the which one that was right? The yeah. one that says I don't know. Forgive my language, but the, the one that says chinga tu madre. Blah blah yeah. blah blah. blah. Mm-hmm. I will not. I refuse. Uh, you know, and and sorry, Maria Chapala, who I play with here in Phoenix. They asked for that, and I was like, no, We're I'm not playing that. that. I'm not playing that. I'm sorry. You guys can play that. I'll step aside. Because, again, it's, it's you know, you're wearing the traje. Yeah. You're representing the culture. You're representing the mariachi. You know, you, you're representing the music. So there is a line that you don't cross where you're not disrespecting what, you're, what you stand by. Yeah, there is... On occasion, there's a video on YouTube of a group playing it, and the the fun. I think this is probably the only exception, barely, barely yeah, yeah. exception. Guys, please and forgive this. Absolutely. It's so funny because they actually played the song, but they played it like as if they were playing like a concert song, and they they played it very well, and they sang it very well, and it's just so funny because the guy is so serious about the stupid words. Yeah. And so I showed it to my nana one year. And she's just dying laughing because they're so serious of how they're playing that stupid ass song. Yeah. But you're right. You're right. So if you're gonna do something like that, if you are gonna do something like that, which you really should not do, yeah. is like at least make fun of it. Yeah. Make it a parody. Make make it like this is a ridiculous song and we really don't like to play this music, so you could like live it up a little bit, mm-hmm. you know. Parry parry the shit out of it. Yeah. I think you could then at least live with yourself without wanting to swallow a cyanide capsule after the gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I think everybody needs to be aware, too, as, as you know, for us, when we're at a gig, everybody, there's somebody always recording you. That's true. Facebook Live? Facebook Live a lot, right? I've, I've, I've typed in, like, my like, like the groups that I've played with yeah. just randomly after a weekend, I'm like, fuck, that's me right there. Yeah. Like, and yeah. even when you're at a gig, you see... People sitting down like this, and you know you're on Facebook Live when they're like this, and you're like, you know, they, you, you're on right there, and you're like, oh shit. I you keep know? thinking, why are they recording us? Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, and that's where you guys, you know, you yourself and the group, you guys have to practice. That's why I'm, I'm really grateful that the group, the mariachi that I play with right now, gives a shit about how they sound. That's good. And, and what was our whole point of this podcast to begin with? The Phoenix area and that was just like not giving, oh, a, shit. Like, not giving yeah. a shit and finally finally there's groups out there you know there's uh, there's there's certain musicians that they give a shit they, they care they take it they take it very seriously they carry themselves really well mm-hmm. so we're gonna we're not gonna be able after a while soon to talk about anybody in phoenix no it's, it's starting to, it's starting to turn that tide a little bit i hope so because it just takes it just takes one you know where I think when you figure out damn how are they stealing you know how are they t- getting all the business not stealing because then then stealing is underpaid that's another right. subject we'll talk about next time under- underbidding yeah. under underbidding everybody else just to get the freaking twenty dollars whatever they're getting so anyways uh, and then we're also gonna talk on our next podcast about self worth charging yeah time your time. Mm-hmm. What you bring to the table. So yeah, we'll do the next podcast in what, like six months? Maybe? Yeah, probably not. Probably yeah, six actually, months. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey I'm already let's, moved in. Let's do a podcast right now. Let's, let's, do a podcast. Do a podcast. let's schedule it. Uh, yeah. Okay, July. Uh, July 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I gotta go to Guadalajara in July. Like, God damn it. Yeah, no. I'm going to Tucson this year for the Mariachi Conference, and they're bringing okay. it back at the TCC. I heard about that. Yeah, so I'm I don't know. I'm happy about that. I'm just glad that it's going back to... To where it, it all began. I don't know. Is it going to go back to its roots? It's probably gonna, not. It's going to take some, a while before. Somewhere it. in the middle. Yeah. I don't think that what we want, what we probably don't want. Here's what I don't. And Okay. I don't want it to be just a fucking free-for-all like it was the last couple of years before. They that was horrible. I'm glad they took that shit out of the casino. 
Yeah. It was like, yeah, you can play here and you can play in the next area. And then, no, guys, go play out in the fucking parking lot and play that bullshit out there. <laughs> yeah. You know? It was a little disrespectful. Yeah. I mean, at least at TCC, you could have an open area. Everyone felt safe. Yeah. Felt comfortable. I don't think, you know? I don't think since it had been in the casino, I don't think anybody, unless I'm not aware, but I don't think anybody fucked it up for anybody. No, I don't think so. Every, but well, it was... There were a couple of incidences in the last few years that I can remember where... You have kids underage drinking, That's, getting yeah. thrown out of the casino. Mm-hmm. Uh, myself, like back in what 2015, I got so shit faced at the conference, and people told me I was blacked out, and people would tell me like I was having conversations. I was just a happy drunk, and I'm just like, who did I talk to? And like I come back the next Saturday, they're like, Sterling, are you okay? And I'm just like, oh shit, what what happened? Did I start any fights with anybody? They're like, no, dude, you're like the happiest drunk ever. Yeah. You're talking to everybody. I mean, I just fall asleep. It's like night club. Yeah, it's just out. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, let's go party. Yeah, I'll be there. With-. Yeah, and then I'm not the hell out. out, snoring. Yeah. Oh my god, you snore. Oh my god. Oh yeah, he, he actually <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I slept in the same room <coughs> <laughs> on a separate bed. Let's let's make that just yeah, yeah. But I was like passing out, and all I hear is like a semi truck <laughs> going off next to me. And I'm like, God damn! I know that I've snored, but how does this motherfucker <laughs> sing opera with a nose but, like that? But that's but that's because you gave me too much to drink. I remember drinking way too much. Oh, it's, I was buying everybody scotch. Yeah, and that's why. Don't yeah. give me alcohol. If we're so gonna... I am a troublemaker, man. So I bought Mario, bought Angel, I bought. I was buying everybody scotch. And before I knew it, everybody was fucking gone. Yeah. It was gone. And even me, I'm like, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Let's go ahead and go jam. I, I, I grabbed somebody's Viwela. I don't even know some poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your Viwela. Give me that shit. And I'm just jamming out there. And I was like, who's Viwela am I holding? I'm like, who's Viwela is this? <laughs> Take it back. Oh, my poor God. little shit. I'm sorry if I did that to you, man. Yeah. So, right. you gotta get going. Yeah. You have a practice. Any last words for the first podcast 2020? Um, I keep promise. Consistent? Yes, I promise, guys. I promise, guys. It's because I just moved into a new house. That we had, we'll talk about Guadalajara, how it went down in 2019, the groups that we got to uh, you know, meet. And, um, yeah, I have one big gripe about, about that um, a, a group that performed that one at the Teatro de Goyado because mm-hmm. you know they, they select who's going to perform for the, the what is show. it the all, the all Mariachi show or whatever so yeah. anyway we'll get to that but um, yeah no I promise uh, to all my viewers I will be here I will be here um, and it's going to be a great year let's make 2020 a great year for all Mariachis yes stay positive stay positive I need to work more no violence no violence Jason has been trying his hardest to be nice, but it, I yeah, think he, I, he I think I failed up already. If you're if you follow me on Facebook or if you're one of my Facebook friends, you know I already I already failed miserably. I tried so hard to be nice. What you told what you told our friend Oscar Madrid? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, hey, to that mariachi uh, that Let's performed at Carnegie Carnegie Hall. Solo Steca. Solo Steca. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was pretty dope. Yeah, well, I, I was... Okay, so before you go, we'll finish with this awful story. I was sitting all weekend just chilling. And I see all these posts. He's like, oh, I'm in New York. I'm Cholo in New York, all right? Southside Tucson in New York. And I'm just like, yeah, that's pretty dope. I like that. Jordan, Jordan's in New York? Yeah, Jordan's, oh, yeah. Jordan, Jordan's in New York. Going to the Chino markets. And, you know, <laughs> it's all good. I love you, boo-boo. Oh, man. <laughs> By Monday, that shit was still on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> He's and like, you were over it, right? You were yeah. over it. I was, I was sitting there like a like a Tourette's, like a kid with Tourette's, <laughs> trying not to have an outburst in like a church. And I'm just sitting there, fuck, 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 and I couldn't help myself. And so he, like, he had a panoramic view of like the New York uh, skyline. Yeah. And then I just in my brain, without any effort, like I just remember the day after tomorrow. And you remember how, like, uh, this, the, the tide comes in because of the global warming, mm-hmm. and then it just freezes over? And I was just like, remember this movie? I hope this happens to you right now. And all your fancy positive, look at me, I'm in New York bullshit. And I was like, like fuck you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I couldn't See, that's I couldn't why, that's why, my dad, we never advance, because there's always somebody Some that asshole. just, like, 
just chops you Dude, jump over there. I, I just and it was and he laughed. <coughs> oh, yeah, I know saw. I know that when he probably looked at that, yeah. he was just like, I'm a motherfucker. Because <laughs> yeah, it all comes from a good place. Yeah, no, for sure. It's it's all it's all funny. It's like, would you rather have that or would you rather me be like, oh congratulations and secretly hate you? No. <laughs> no, that's not me at all. I'm like, man, fuck your New York trip. But like I would do anything for you. Yeah. I'm your friend. Yeah. Right? You call me up tomorrow, you need me, guess what? I'm there. Actually I have been there. Mm-hmm. I played a couple of shows in Tucson just because they asked. I was there like, you go. fuck yeah, let's do it. And I was happy to do it. Puro tapatio. I old group. That's that's one thing I need to do this year. I need to work more. I do need to work more. And kind of sorta of need to get with a group. I think I'm ready. I hope so. I'm like a hoe who's now trying to turn himself into a housewife. I think that I'm finally there. I think I'm finally ready to be in a group again. I don't know. We'll see. Last time I tried, it didn't go over so well. I really couldn't do it. So That's you're right. you're going from an adult filmmaker to to Susie homemaker now. I'm gonna try. <laughs> Can I try? <laughs> Someone give me a chance. Give me a chance. Oh uh, yes. Chance. Somebody give this guy a job, Just please. Just give me a job. I'll be nice. I'll show up. I'll be on time. Won't say shit. If you ask me a theory question, I'll <coughs> very politely explain to you. Learn a new I've been telling you this. Well, I've been, I've been over the rip holiday break in the last two Good. months. Good. All I've been doing is listening to YouTube videos of like voice techniques and then learning lyrics. Good. That's all I've been doing. Good. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to sing anything. I'm just saying I've been learning it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. All right, guys. I got to go. Watching. He's got to get to practice. Follow us at, at Play Mariachi uh, Facebook. The website. If you want to support the channel, please follow the links below. If you like to buy shit on Amazon, I actually opened up an affiliate store. If you like guitar strings, the strings, all the shit that we buy every day, there's links in there. If you if you go and cop one of those, we get a little piece of that action, so I can buy a better mics, some more shit. Um, you know, it all goes back into the channel for what we're doing here. So if you like it, please subscribe, please like, and we'll guys see you in the next one. All right, please get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, we're also selling dildos and... <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> the-